Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here in YouTube you know me as what? Epic Fantasy, that's right. And this is my latest tutorial. This is a fun blacksmithing tutorial on how to make a fire arrow or a flaming arrow. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It, this all stems from a friend of mine in the UK took this picture in a little museum over there in the UK of this series of arrows. And the one in the center right there, the fire arrow, the flaming arrow, really piqued my interest and I said that'd be a cool project to make. So in this video we're going to go ahead and make it. And um, I don't actually make this myself. I recruited the help of a skilled blacksmith here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. His name is Clayton Cowart and we went to his shop and uh, forged this up. If you um, want to know more about him or if you want his services as a blacksmith, you know, I will put links to his Instagram and his Facebook in the description of this video. He does a lot of different things including really high-end knife making and make and uh, making woot steel and Damascus steel and stuff like that. Really, really interesting uh, guy, interesting blacksmith. So uh, let's do the intro and let's do it. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chains, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormTheCastle.com. Let's make something. All right, let's take a quick look here. This diagram here shows you the three different parts of the arrow that we're going to do. And we'll do it in four steps. All from a single piece of mild steel. So we start with a piece of, with the mild steel. It's a half inch round. And you can start with a half inch square if you want, if you have that. But he is, we were just going to square it off. And the arrow itself, the whole thing, the arrow tip, will be approximately six inches in length, a little under six inches in length. And, uh, but we're going to have plenty of excess uh, steel here to make it easy for us to work with. And you'll see what I mean by that if you don't understand. But the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use a hot cut uh, sledge to cut two slots in the steel like this. See those red lines? Those are the two slots we're going to cut and each slot goes all the way through. So the first part of the hour we're going to do is um, begin the basket work. Nice. Hit. Hit. Jim, that's a two-man job. That's me swinging that sledge. It's a two-man job to really get the good cutting going to cut all the way through that piece of uh, steel. But that's only the beginning of the basket work. We're at, after, once we get those slots cut all the way through, we're going to work on the tip of the arrow. So now we've got our slot, lo, location of our basket slots, right? But we have, so notice we haven't opened them up yet. Let's, we're not going to do that until later because they would be very sensitive to heat and very sensitive to hammering. Now we've established we're going to need about two inches for the tip. So uh, he's just using a, a hardy cutoff tool to cut off uh, the excess metal on the end of the bar here to give us about two inches, an inch and three quarters, that we on the end of the bar so we can uh, do the tip. And then we just follow a standard blacksmithing practice here called pointing. Notice how he shifts the bar back and forth 90 degrees. He's putting a point on the end of that bar for the arrow. And, um, but it's, this is just a square tip for now. So it is, it's a, it'll be a four-sided tip to start with. And that's a standard thing that blacksmiths do. And once he's got that four-sided tip established, then you go ahead and knock off those four corners to, in effect, make it an eight-sided tip. So you, do, you don't just go for pointing it direct out. You make it a four-sided point, then you make it an eight-sided point, and then you can further refine it to make it nice and round. That's just a standard thing, and I do have a tutorial, a video tutorial on how to do that, if you want more. But it looks good. So we've got a point, and we've got our basket started. Looks good. Yeah. I like it. So now he's going to switch to a cross peen hammer because he's going to draw out the um, the socket and that's the part we're going to work on next. So this is step three is the socket and we still haven't drawn out that basket yet. And to do this socket we're going to use a little jig that he made. This is the shiny side there is three eighths of an inch in diameter which is the same size as the wooden arrow shaft this point will be mounted to. So we use it as a gauge and a jig to make sure we smith it out correctly to the right size. 
but let's start like this. First he's going to do is draw out the last two inches of that arrow just as a beginning here and he's using a hardy, a, a hardy tool there. He's just going to begin it. You'll get a sense for the metal, a sense for the size, and a sense for how much we have to draw that steel out. Now he's going to cut it off on the hot cut, cut off tool on the hardy pole. And now he's going to use the cross peen on the hammer to draw that out to shape. Make it like a fishtail. And when you get to this point now, that steel is thin, so you it's easy to overheat it. So watch your overheating and try to do it in as few heats as possible. I think he did it in two heats. So now he's now he switched back to the face of the hammer. And it's almost in shape. But look at that, doesn't that look good? Now the fun part. We need to curl over that socket. He returns to his hardy tool and a smaller hammer just to begin the shape there. And the big thing this about this, now I, I have a tutorial um, on forming sockets when I did the bodkin arrow. I have another tutorial on how to make a bodkin arrow, which is a more basic type of arrow tip. Uh, I'll put a link to that if you want to see that. It's just slowly curving that over. And the big thing about this is that it's thinner on the end and it's thicker towards the shaft of the arrow tip. So you have to kind of work that thicker section more and slowly ease the steel out from there. But it looks good. Now if you don't have a hardy tool like he does, you know, you can do this any number of ways. Use the edge of the anvil, use the face of the anvil, use the horn of the anvil. And slowly work that steel into a curved shape, into a socket. But it's looking good. And those ears can be overlapped. So let's just watch. This is the most critical part of the whole process. So I, I ran a lot of extra film here so you could get a good look at how he slowly curves that over, working the um, thicker part near the basket more to slowly bring that steel out and fold it over to get a nice cone shaped. And once we get it about right, we put our jig in there to fit it. So like I said, that jig is 3 eighths of an inch just like our wooden arrow shaft so we can fit it nicely so it'll fit on the wood arrow shaft right. nicely. This one into Easy enough, the and see, I'm, what I'm demonstrating there is the folding over of the yeah. ears of the socket. Right. So that's that. We move the shaft, and now we are going to be moving on to step four, which is to bring out the bring out those tines on the basket. So it's back to some work with the hot cut sledge to start to open those up and you have to take your time here and the same thing goes for this now that you've got four distinct um, tines on that basket you have to be careful to not overheat it and to try to do it in as few heats as possible so evidently the weather's going to clear up because now they're thin they're very thin they will heat quick and there's the risk of breakage too so use any techniques you can you can use pliers you can use um a uh, hot cut sledge, you can use um, a chisel to slowly bring those out. And I'm going to show you something here that you're going to like. A technique that works really well for this. Use a drift, a wedge shaped drift, and look at how that draws that basket right out. So now we've got two tines one way and two tines the other way, but it's a beautiful shape, a basket shape. See ya. So this is a nice way to do it. And once you've got that drawn out, you can remove that drift. And then heat it and then use go. tools, pliers, a chisel, and then a hammer to uh, fold two of the tines out away so they form a, a, a basket shape. All right? Pull away the tines so they're all separated oh, like yeah, that. And that's that. Good. Looks good. What a wonderful project. Uh, special thanks here goes to Clayton Cowart 
for um, doing this project. I was really excited to get it done, allowing us to use this forge. And, um, you know, make sure you check out his links if you want to learn more about his knife making. There's pictures on his Instagram uh, account of what he does. His steel making stuff is really cool. He gives classes and he does custom private work. But I like it. Now, one of the big things about an arrow is you want to make sure it's nice and true. So spend time making it nice and straight. And Archer is going to want it to be as perfectly straight as you can get it. Clean it up. Do any final work on it, and then test it. See if it's true and straight. And look at that; it looks pretty good. Very nice. That's it. There's our finished arrow. Um, thanks for um, watching this video. I have, I think, somewhere around 70 blacksmithing videos. If you want to watch them, I'll put the playlist link. And uh, I uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell. More stuff coming. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.